Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lib code question 347 that says top k frequent elements. So guys, today in this video we will start off with uh, n log n time complexity solution and then we will again try to understand the problem and try to build up the intuition such a way that the newer approach would take big of n time complexity. So yeah guys, we will keep building the approach and keep optimizing our code uh, to reach the most optimal solution. So yeah, stick till the end and watch the complete video. Now here, the question definition is very much simple that you will be given one integer array nums and an integer k. From that nums, you need to return k most frequent elements. We need, we can return the answer in any order. Okay. Now here, this is the nums array and k is 2 here. So what are the two most frequent elements? As you can see that the frequency of 1 is 3, the frequency of 2 is 2 and frequency of 3 is 1. So the two elements that are most frequent is this, this two that are one and two. So yeah, we return one and two in the answer. Here we have only one element in the nums and k is also one. So we have written one. So I hope you guys have now understanding of the question. Its question definition uh, is simple here. It is easy to understand. Now guys, if I ask you that if you have to find k frequent elements, then first thing you must know is how to uh, how much frequency of each element. That is nothing but what is the frequency of each element. You must know that, right? So this is uh, can be done by an order map easily, right? Whenever you need to find frequency of some elements or like integer elements or strings, then you always take an order map to find the frequency, correct? Okay. Further, we need to find k most frequent elements. So after you have found it, see after you have found this thing, this is nothing but we found frequency. So after you have found frequency, we need to choose k most frequent elements. That means we need to sort elements based on the frequency. Correct? To find k most frequent element, we need to sort element based on the frequency. So, sort element based on the frequency to get k most frequent elements. Okay. Now further guys, if you want to sort some elements based on like something like frequency or something and you, you need to return k most frequent element or k of something, then which is the best data structure to do that? That's nothing but priority key or maximum key so that this is the best data structure to get top k of anything see guys you might be wondering that why priority key or max if that we use why not sorting so this is because so let's say if you you have two options either perform sorting or perform or use heaps like a maximum heaps so this uh, sorting takes big of n log n time complexity and you 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 use heaps so to find so here you are only talking about k most uh, k like something like k k most or k least frequent so if you use sorting to find this k most or something of k then it would take n log n whereas if you use heaps then it would take big o of n log k okay so this is the difference right this is the difference in time complexity that instead of sorting the complete vector we would use heaps and that will reduce to our time complexity to n log k okay correct now moving on to the coding part for the solution so here the coding part is very much simple so let's say this is the given example atom so let we will make a dry run for this atom now first what we did we found the frequency and initialize the frequency for each element inside our unordered map u so here what we did we simply made uh, uh, one pointing to its frequency that is 3, 2 pointing to its frequency that is 2 and 3 pointing to its frequency 1. So now each number is pointing to its frequency inside this unordered map. Now further we took priority queue, maximum hip and in this max hip what we did is we inserted uh, the second element as and then the first element. That means in the priority queue we inserted like this 3, comma 1. So this priority queue is nothing uh, is of a type pair, right? So and two comma two and one comma three. Th so this first element represents the frequency, and second element nothing but represent the nums. Okay. So why we uh, push or inserted the element like this way inside our priority queue? Because guys, we need to sort based on the frequency. So since we need to sort based on the frequency, so uh, this priority queue will sort the element based on the first element. And that's why the first element is nothing but frequency. So this will sort element based on the frequency and this is nothing but 
and the nums nums of y okay so yeah we sorted element based on the frequency and from that we took the k most frequent elements and yeah uh, we push the uh, the this nums of y into our answer that is the second element is nothing but nums of y into our answer vector and we pop we keep popping that element so yeah guys that's how uh, we, we push the elements inside the priority queue and then we pop the elements based on the frequency the maximum frequent element of the priority queue would be present at the top and the topmost element will get pop okay and yeah, then we return the answer now talking about the time and space complexity see guys this operation will take big of uh, n time okay? time complexity would be this this will take big of n time again and this will take log of we go of log of k10 because we are only performing this k10 so yeah overall you can say that time complexity is nothing but big of n plus big of n log of k because the size of priority q is n and we are performing pop operation k times so the overall time complexity would be n log k now in the worst case if uh, there is something like this k equals to n that means if the number of elements k that you need to uh, get in the answer is equal to n then in that case our time complexity would be big of n square this is the worst case time complexity okay and you're not talking about the space complexity the space complexity is big of n right because we are storing n elements in the unordered map plus big of n as we are storing n elements in the priority so this is the space complexity so yeah i hope you guys have understood this approach that um, we are simply trying to find the frequency and then sort the elements based on the frequency so this is one approach to solve this question now now as we know the priority queue solves on the basis of frequency right that we just did but what if we store the frequency in a vector and traverse from reverse okay so what is this so for an example for any given area like this we first we first found the frequency using uh, unordered map okay we found the frequency of each element using unordered map now guys after this what if we create a new vector where the index represent or denote the frequency and the value tells if any element has i frequency or not okay so here let's say i created an a, a new vector of a size 3 and each uh, and the value of each index represent whether there is any element in the nums array with a frequency i so it tells whether if an element has i frequency or not whether there is an element in the nums array with i frequency or not so if it is true then that means we have any an element with i frequency if it is false that means we don't have any element with that ith frequency got this so can we perform something like this okay yeah so the index represent the frequency and the value of the index tells whether any element has that frequency or not but this doesn't store the nums right we need to at the end we need to return the answer that contains these nums like 2 3 and elements from this nums array but this doesn't store so in order to store that we can take 2d vector because we want to store the actual nums right although we want to sort based on the frequency but at the end we need to return the actual nums right so what we can do see the concept remain the same first we found this frequency using uh, unordered map this is using unordered map the frequency of 1 is 3 2 is 3 and frequency of 3 is 2 then what we did is we use the same concept the index denote the frequency so here we took the 2d vector of a size 3 but instead of true and false each uh, value would be itself a vector because this is a 2d vector so this is a vector so is there what are how many elements are there with a frequency 0 none so there there are no elements with a frequency 1 none with a frequency 2 yeah there is one element 3 so add this in this vector with a frequency 3 there are two elements so add inside this vector so this is nothing but a 2d vector where each index consists of one vector right and that represent that the element 1 and 2 of the num side has a frequency 3 so this is what by using the space we can reduce the time complexity of sorting and we can tell yeah uh, that an element is present with the ith index ith frequency or not by doing this way okay got this so yeah this is nothing but uh, creating a bucket here and this is and this is nothing but a bucket sort you can call this as a bucket sort where we used to store the frequency inside the bucket and the 
uh, frequency values represent the number of elements having that frequency got it now the coding part of this is also simple almost similar to the previous approach that we first created the unordered map then we found the frequency of each element and in and store it in our frequency unordered map then we created this 2d array bucket and for each frequency what we pushed is we pushed uh, the uh, the frequency and then the element okay so our index is becomes nothing but the frequency see here let's say the element 1 and 2 has, uh, has a frequency of 3 so we will push inside the third index that the elements are this so this is how we did and then this is nothing but we are storing the answer until the answers of size equals to k until we found k most frequent elements we keep storing the answer so here we traverse from reverse see guys the bucket remains the same this thing remains the same but the only thing changes is which we would traverse from reverse okay so let me show you what we are doing here so this thing we have stored in our bucket now to get my key most most frequent elements so we would start traversing from reverse that means we would check whether there are any element with a frequency 3 or not okay so the first uh, will first loop will go through the frequency and second loop will go through the inner vector okay so yeah if the bucket uh, if the j is uh, this j loop uh, with a j variable the second loop will travel the inner vector and here we will just push the uh, the value this one and two values into our answer until the size of answer is equals to k okay so yeah that's how we are proceeding with the k most frequent elements by traversing this bucket from the back okay so yeah guys that's all for the coding part for the up uh, this approach now talking about the time and space complexity so this unordered map uh, frequency count will take big of n time complexity this will also take big of n time complexity because we are simply trying to push n elements inside this vector right this frequency map has, has nothing but n elements now here this will take big of k time complexity because we are filling this answer ve vector until its size is k okay so yeah that's the time complexity. The overall, you can say the time complexity overall is nothing but big O of n, but the space complexity has increased. So space complexity is big O of n. For this is for what map plus big O of n square. This is for two D vector. Okay, because see guys, here we are creating the bucket of size n. See, in this is of size what? This is of a size n. Because let's say even given nums array, a nums array is of size n. So in a worst case, the bucket can be of a size n. Okay, got it. And in a worst case also, the inner thing, this inner thing, can at max has n elements. This can also has at max n elements. Although other will remain null, but any one uh, uh, one of the uh, a vector inside this bucket can be of size n, right? So overall time complexity would be big of n squared for this case. So the size space complexity here can be big of n square, right? So yeah, although the space complexity has increased, but the time complexity reduced from n log n uh, or n log k to big of n. So yeah, uh, that's all for this video. If you guys have still any doubts, then do let me know in the comment section. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.